Brilliant. Um, so, hello, I'm Carl, and uh, just realised in the seven and a half, eight years I was at Lancaster, I never got to actually present in a lecture theatre, so this is nice. Um, so, hopefully, at the end of the talk, I'm going to make you feel like if you come for the end of your PhD and you don't feel like going into academia, it's not the end of the world, and there's lots of opportunities like for you outside of that in an industry. So this is just going to be kind of like what I've done since I've done my PhD and uh, one of my friends said I might as well just call this N equals 1 because it might, it might not work for everyone but this is sort of how it's worked for me and anecdotally with some of my friends. So uh, just a bit of background about me, I grew up in Wales and then some stuff that's not really relevant happened and I moved to Lancaster at 19. And <laughs> I, uh, I did my undergrad here, I did computer science and innovation uh, if I'm being honest, it took about 50% of my time up. The rest of the time I was in the pub. But like, I could justify that by saying I was you know, reading, programming, and meeting people, and building up networking. And At the end of that, I graduated and was offered a PhD position, and so I took that. And I did that immediately after my undergrad. And six months in, I changed my topic. And I, that happens quite a lot, so if that happens to you, don't worry. And uh, I ended up working on... Uh, modeling sort of residential heating uh, sensors and control. It was very cool. And looking across like the three and a half years, I said it took up 90% of my time, but like in my last year, it took up 200% of my time. And then in my first year, it didn't really take up anything because it was uh, sort of how it ended up going. And when I wasn't doing my PhD, I was uh, you know, talking to people, I'm trying to work out what I actually wanted to do and what I was actually good at. And it came to the end of my PhD and in July, Two years ago, I submitted my thesis. It was like, right, um, I want to get a job. I want to try something other than academia. Like, I feel like at the time I was in, like, there wasn't any positions that were open that were interesting, and it was very, it didn't look like there was any really secure jobs. So I thought, oh, I'll, um, I'll try industry. I'll put together a CV. And it was like, well, what should I actually put in my CV? So I thought I'd kind of do a retrospective and look back at what I did during my PhD and the skills I gained and. Depending on how you're funded, of course, when you do a PhD, um, you're literally paid or you pay to think hard about problems, uh, be critical of yourself and, and other people, and present at conferences like in front of the smartest people in the world. And there's no other like, job that lets you do that. And it's really fun. It gives you like a very particular set of skills. So if I think about it, one of the main things is project management. I mean, depending on how you're supervised, you're basically given some high-level goals, which could be like, here is your research question, or you know, we want to solve this problem, and uh, you've got three years, go. And when it really comes down to is you get very good at time management and working out how to sort of like contingency plan, and you have to manage around like conference deadlines and things you have to publish, and very quickly you become very good at, at doing this. Additionally, and a very important part of the PhD is you learn about critical thinking, like, especially at the start of your PhD, you're given, might be given some, some work which is decades old and it's coming back in vogue or some new paper and so, okay, right, something's wrong with this, work out what it is, or there's holes in this research, or there's new things that we haven't thought about, go and do this. And there's literally millions of things that you could do, but you need to ruthlessly work out what's not going to work quickly and not do them and really make sure you're being efficient with your time. And sort of attached to that is like, I think you have to become an information sponge. You need to be very familiar with what can sometimes be a very large body of work, and you have to learn ways of very quickly taking in that, whether you're given a seminal paper and expected to kind of go through all the references, spider out and read everything that's relevant, or sometimes you can just be given a pile of books and just spend a weekend just getting familiar with it. And on the, the flip side of that skill is communication. I mean, wow, it's really good taking stuff in if you can't tell anyone about your work, there's no point in doing the work. And you're expected to be able to do this in very many different situations, sort of like an informal like coffee meeting, a, a more like a sort of semi-formal presentation, or in written form in a journal or a conference paper, depending on what your field does. And then kind of attached to this is what I like to call community sense. So as if you're in a very fast-paced moving um, fields such as computer science, you need to understand what the community is doing, sort of what topics are in vogue, what's kind of going out of fashion a little bit, and know how to position your work in a way that people will be actually interested and think, yes, this is great, I want this in the conference. 
And then a final skill, and definitely one of the most important one, is um, you kind of build a global network. And like, I know when I started, I was like, oh, networking, I don't want to talk to people or, or whatever. But like, you end up doing it automatically just by talking to your colleagues. When you go to these events that have free food, you end up talking to the person next to them. And when you go to the conferences that are sort of, even if it's in Aberdeen and it's not a very flash and cool conference compared to your friend who went to Hawaii, still you get to go and you meet these interesting people and you start, you build connections and some may stay in academia, some may move on, but you can always get back in contact with them and sometimes that's really fun. So those are kind of like the six core skills I consider that the PhD gave me. And I put that into a CV and I thought, okay, let's uh, go find a job, which was actually surprisingly hard. So um, I moved down to London after my PhD and I thought, all right, I'm going to get a job. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, so recruiters, and most of them don't quite understand what a PhD is and or know, or know actually sort of the skills you have. I have a PhD in computer science and all the stuff was essentially applied statistics. And they were like, great, cool, can you build websites? And yeah, fine. Um, <laughs> then online job sites are really hard to be personal. And uh, it's very hard to like find a job position that you want to find. So it's like software engineer, and that doesn't really tell you much except like you're going to be building software. But whatever. So I thought well, I'll, I'll use one of my skills. So um, I called a guy I knew who was working in London at the time. I thought he was working for a bank, a guy called Eddie, who I then called up and he said, "Yeah, I've just started at this uh, this startup, and we're actually looking for sort of data scientists. Do you want to come and have a chat?" I had an interview three hours later, and then um, an offer one day later, which was. To be honest, incredibly lucky, but it was still nice that I got to do that just through leveraging the network I'd built through my PhD. And I joined a company called List. And uh, List is, I would never have expected I'd work there. So List is a fashion e-commerce retailer. And I thought, me, fashion, what? Like, but in terms of the jobs I did when I was there, so I worked on image processing and sort of taking out sort of like color analysis and pattern analysis and worked on sort of engineering infrastructure like notifications search which is very hard by the way um, like there's a reason Google make a lot of money and some kind of internal support stuff and this is really interesting because they really decided okay we have all this data so what lists do is they have something like 500 retailers and they just bring all this data in and aggregate them and put them onto kind of like a unified ontology and there's all really interesting sort of machinery that goes in the way of that in terms of classification and sort of predicting bits of data that are missing and that was kind of my job was to work on that so like my principal role was as a data scientist and using all like technical expertise to help grow the company and then kind of as the company got bigger so it started off with 19 people when I started and had 80 when I left and um, so sort of like as I kind of was there longer, I started doing some kind of project management um, roles, which was really interesting. But I think, especially in the early days, one of the most important roles I had, and I think this is very good for what PhDs are good at, is being able to go, no, that won't work because of X, Y, Z. And I find the ac academic environment is one of the few places that you get very comfortable doing that. So if you have a discussion with your colleagues and say, we want to try this, and you can go, oh, no, that won't work because of, of this. And being able to say that in a corporate environment would seem to be quite rare, especially depending on what, however people have come up. They didn't want to put their neck out on the line sometimes. And like, I find the, uh, the people who work there had PhDs were very happy to be like, no, we're not doing this. This is silly. So I was there for 18 months, and then I left because I wanted to start my own business. And I thought I'd do a kind of another retrospective after my time in industry. And I thought, well, I gained some kind of like skills or uses of technology. So I learned some new programming languages, some, some build environments, some different ways of doing task management. But then when I kind of looked at it, the kind of core PhD skills I'd learned stayed the same. They just applied to a different context. So in terms of project management, that just made me really good at estimating how long tasks were going to take, what could go wrong, how we can avoid them going wrong, and putting in contingency. And it really made, made it clear that we could plan in advance and try and not waste a load of time on things that wouldn't work, which again fits into critical thinking. We'd help her steer the company away from mistakes that may, may take too much time and have not very, very much kind of benefit. And being an information sponge meant you can very quickly take up 
new um, project backgrounds. Like I'd never looked at a search engine in my life and I just went and read the literature in the last five years. And I'm like, okay, that's what they're doing in search. And in terms of communication skills, suddenly you have to communicate with people with a lot less technical knowledge. So um, you'd have to try and explain what you're doing to finance or to communications and they don't know what a lot of stuff in terms of computer science is and you have to really tweak your communication skills to be able to recognise the sort of the common basis everyone had. And community sense kind of changed the market sense so you kind of start to get a feeling for what your customers were doing or you know what what they wanted and what your competitors were and weren't doing and what you could do to try and get an advantage. And then your global network kind of grew into this more diverse network as you like talk to all these people who just weren't academics and like just from going to meetups or talking to people in coffee shops, you just ended up meeting all these people with insane backgrounds. So as I was saying after I left List I wanted to start a business. So um, my old housemate, who was also did his doctorate here, um, wanted to start our own business, and our plan was we wanted to take our research we'd done in our PhDs and commercialise it. We wanted it to be used rather than just being left off on a shelf when we finished with it, because with computer science, the way it works is you publish as you go along, so it wasn't like there was a load of things left to be published, it was published and done. And we, we had these systems that could actually be useful. So um, we created our company, Hardy and Alice Inventions, and uh, We've been full time now for about four months, and we're currently we have an Innovate UK like grant to get, do some industrial research projects, and it's really really fun. And the skills I learned in my PhD have really helped because I've had to learn so much extra stuff just to survive. And um, which I'll go that because I skipped the slide. Um, so I had to learn accountancy. I've had to learn risk management. I've had to learn about tendering, distributed task management, payment law, like all sorts of crazy stuff to do with my business partner's PhD regarding projector math and all sorts. And it's been, it's been massively helpful. And uh, I missed the slide, so I'll just go back. But um, the aim of our company, as I was saying, is to get our research commercialized. But we also wanted to uh, help sort of bridge the gap between academia and industry because we found there's a lot of myths on both sides of what people are expecting. As we're very, very recently just from academia, we found it was a lot easier to try and get people in, in touch with people who are doing relevant work. And ultimately, we wanted to have fun and continue learning and grow to the size where we could start employing other people who are in very similar positions to us and get them into a point where they can try and get their research commercialised. So just to summarise, um, I found that you've never really stopped learning or developing the skills, but the kind of the, the core PhD kind of toolkit that you build up really serve you for life and fits into any context. And the PhD process is like, um, a unique place where you can gain those tools just because you're, you're left alone just to work on this problem and you kind of naturally build these skills just so you can solve it. So, and to summarise, everyone in this room is uh, experts, abstract reasoning, are able to prize apart problems in the head, find all the issues and present them in concise and clear manners. And you're also able to kind of look ahead and say, no, this probably won't work and we shouldn't do this. And that makes you incredibly valuable, especially from an industry perspective. So if you're worried that you can't get a job in academia, if you go to industry, they'll throw jobs at you. So uh, um, thank you very much and any questions.